two rounds on Sports Challenge. It's the Stangle Yankees 60 and the McCarthy Yankees 30. Plenty of time left. Here's your toss-up. New category, unforgettable moments in baseball. First, the all-time unforgettable great 1927 Yankees in action before uniform numbers became popular. The third game pitcher is Herb Pennock of the Yankees, Lee Meadows of Pittsburgh, and the Wainer brothers, Paul and Lloyd, ready to go for the Bucks. First inning, Earl Coombs, base hit up the middle. Candy follows with a hit. Babe Ruth makes it out. That brings up Lou Gehrig. He swings and sends a deep drive between Barnhart and Wainer. It's between them all the way to the wall. Two runs are going to score on this one, and Gehrig had in his hands going to try to score. The relay, Barnhart to Wainer, the right to Gooch. He's out at the plate. Two nothing Yankees. 5-0 the scores. We go to the seventh inning and Babe Ruth up with two men on and Ruth to hit 60 home runs during the regular season. Belts that one deep and out of here. Ruth with a home run, the first of this series, and the Yankees now have an 8 to nothing lead. What an explosion by Murderer's Row in this 27 series. And how about the left-hander Pennock? He's not allowed a base runner yet. All right, along with the offensive explosion, Herb Pennock lost his perfect game the next inning in the eighth when Pye Trainers singled. Pennock pitched for 22 consecutive years in the American League. Another Hall of Fame pitcher holds the all-time record of most years pitched in the major leagues. For 20 points, name him. Early win. Early win is correct for 20 points. Win. Holds oh, the all-time record. <laughs> All right, the Stengel Yankees, it's your free throw. This unforgettable moment in baseball was a game within a game, a private battle between a great hitter and a league full of top pitchers. The 1946 All-Star Game at Fenway Park in Boston. Managers Charlie Graham of the National League and Steve O'Neill of the American League have named starting pitchers Bob Feller and Claude Passo. Fourth inning, Ted Williams of Boston up, and he sends one deep to right field. Home run for Williams. The American League leads 3-0. Fifth inning, Kirby Higby delivers. Base hit, Ted Williams, he's two for two. Seventh inning, Ewell Blackwell on the mound for the National League. He whips one sidearm, and Williams has another base hit. Three for three for the thumper. Now it's the eighth inning. Rip Sewell on the mound. There's his famous Evis pitch. Outside, ball one. No one has ever homered off this blooper. It's on its way. Williams swings a deep drive to right field. Back, back, back. Home run. Williams sends it into the bullpen. And the American League wins 12 to nothing. And here in Boston, they love Teddy ball games. Tom Hitter. Ted Williams with that great performance in the All-Star Game of 46, hitting that home run off Rip Sewell, who is from Alabama. A namesake, also from Alabama, holds the all-time record for fewest strikeouts, fanning only four times in an entire season. In fact, twice he struck out only four times. For 10 points, who was that Cleveland infielder? Yeah, Billy five. Goodman. Billy Goodman is incorrect. So we can go to the McCarthy Yankees. Can you give me the name for Joe, 20 points? Joe Sewell. Joe Sewell is correct. Struck out only four times in a full season. All right, that cuts into the lead. It's now 80 to 50. Second free throw also belongs to the Stengel Yankees. Yankee Stadium, final play, 53 World Series. Dodgers trail the Yankees three games to two. Bottom of the ninth, a 3-3 tie. Clem Levine delivers, and it's high. Ball four. Hank Bauer, the winning run is at first base. Yogi Berra swings. There's a line drive to right field. Racing toward the line is Carl Ferrillo. On the track, he makes the catch. One out. Here's Mickey Mantle. He swings and taps one up the third baseline. A tough play for Billy Cox. He charges. No play. Everyone is safe. Bauer, the winning run at second base. And Mantle at first. One out. Bottom of the ninth inning at Yankee Stadium. And here's Billy Martin. What a series he's had. Labine checks the runners, picks up his sign. Here it comes. Low line drive up the middle, into center field, a base hit. Duke Snyder charges the ball. Here comes Hank Bauer, round third. Bauer will score. The Yankees beat the Dodgers and win the 1953 World Series. And the star, Billy the Kid Martin. That was his eighth RBI. And Martin has set a new series record with 12 base hits in six games. Martin's 12 base hits still stand as a World Series record for a six-game series for 10 points. Bobby Richardson, with 13, shares the record for most hits in a seven-game series with whom? Clemente. Clemente is incorrect. So we can go to the Messrs. Gomez, DiMaggio, and Henry. Who holds or shares that record of 13 hits in a series? Lou Brock. Lou Brock is correct with 13. He did it in 1968. Hey, that makes it mighty close after three rounds. The Stengel Yankees, 80. And the McCarthy Yankees 70. We've got a good old-fashioned dogfight right within Yankee Stadium. And here's our fourth category, the unexpected. 
And how often have you ever gone to a ball game expecting to see a triple play? Washington's Ron Hansen's rare unassisted triple play, no less than five such defensive gems were recorded in the 1968 baseball season. It was the year of the triple play. Philadelphia got one against Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh turned it right back on Cincinnati. Minnesota triple played Cleveland. The Detroit Tigers on their way to a pennant also celebrated a pitcher's dream come through. One pitch, three out. Are you both ready? A lot of whispering going on between that film clip. They're all anticipating the question, and here it is. Only one player has ever achieved an unassisted triple play in a World Series game. For 20 points, name him. Bill, Bill Wamgans. Bill Wamsgans is correct. What well, we should ask you is, can you spell it? <laughs> There we go. <laughs> First free throw belongs to the the uh, McCarthy or the Wamsgans Yankees. It's 90 to 80. With Kentucky Derby winner Reva Ridge as the favorite, let's look for the unexpected in the 1972 Preakness. Here is Chick Anderson. Coming into the stretch, BBB is drawing away from the field. He has it by three. Here's Reva Ridge making his bid, and Nole Asi is really picking up ground. Coming on to the wire, it's BBB, and here comes Nole Asi in the center of the racetrack. It's going to be BBB and Nole Asi, but BBB appears to be holding on. Coming to the wire, it is BBB. Nole Asi in that final drive, picking him up. Can't get there. It's BBB, I like the man. Nole Asi second, keep him in third. Beaver is his foot. All right, BBB won that middle jewel of the Triple Crown, and the Preakness, as you know, is the run for the Black-Eyed Susans. In the Belmont Stakes, the winner is given a garland of carnations for 10 points. What flower adorns the winner of the Kentucky Derby? Yeah, five yeah, seconds. Roses. 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 roses, a run for the roses is correct for 10 points. <laughs> Final free throw. Each year, each year, the National Hockey League begins its season with a notice that the NHL will be very tough on those who insist on fighting on the ice. A friendly hello kiss. And the 1972 fourth game of the Stanley Cup playoffs is underway. Yes, the Rangers are playing gracious host to the friendly neighbors from the north, the Boston Bruins. Pick a man and fight. Get his jersey over his head so he can't see your punches. Get him down on the ice. Maybe help will be along soon. And if you think they're not ready to fight, watch how fast the gloves come off. <laughs> Hockey at its best. The Rangers and the Bruins. Five Bruins in the penalty box to hibernate for just a while. As you saw, Yankees, there were five Boston Bruins in the penalty box at one time. For 10 points in the NHL, how many men are left to play on the ice when, as you see, as many as five men are in the penalty box? One. One. That is incorrect. So we can double the point total to 20. That would tie the game at 100. Listen carefully, Yankees, for the tie. If you have five men in the penalty box, how many men then can still be active on the ice? Four. Four is correct. We have a tie game. The Yankees 100. Yankees 100. And we'll be back with our bonus biography round. We're 60 points right after this sports challenge timeout.